I had the privilege, honor, and blessing to be part of a project called The Quest for Answers, looking for the first Christians in Turkey. And out of this project came a CD called Come Back Home. And we had video clips taped both in Greece and Turkey. And in the past few months, we had people coming here to the studio, people who were involved somehow in the taping, in the clips, creating this music and I want to share with you a little bit of the history behind this project and I truly hope that as you learn more about me about these people that are going to come here that you are touched touched by music touched by people's stories and that you somehow feel closer to God feel like it's time to come home I'm here with Douglas. He's the one who first dreamed about the project in Turkey, the one who first dreamed about the CD Come Back Home. How was that dream? How did it come about? <laughs> well, uh, we had a first season, and the first season was in Israel, right? Uh, and we always had this idea of the second season. Well, mm -hmm. I have the idea or the dream of five seasons, right? <laughs> oh my! <laughs> <laughs> but came to the second season, and for many reasons, I decide not to go through, right? But every time I decide, no, I'm not doing. I saw God doing something amazing, right? Opening doors, uh, bringing resources, people, and. If we have this project, it's because of God, mm -hmm. right? Definitely. And you know, uh, I value music, right? I do believe the word, the preaching, and the music uh, need to go along uh, together, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the, the, the teaching, the preaching needs um, music, and the music needs the, the word of God, right? And I, I recall, right, that, okay, we're going forth, uh, we and we are doing music, right? And I said to you, you are doing the music. <laughs> that was quite a surprise. For a little bit, I thought it was actually a joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure, it was out of your comfort zone, right? Yeah. You're singing uh, on my on my sermons as appeal songs, right? But now we are doing a project, a solo, right? Uh, 12 songs, 13 songs. 13 songs, um, uh, bilingual, because yeah, we did both right. English and Portuguese. Portuguese yeah. So we had the the going after versions, trying to make English versions, and then you have the studio time, both languages. Yeah. Definitely out of my comfort zone, but we see some fruit out of that project already, and it, it feels great. Yeah, we see God in control, mm -hmm. right? And we see His blessings already on this project. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that I will not do the other seasons, right? But you never know. It's in never God's say hand. never. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's in God's hands. But it was beautiful to have you there, have our family there together, and visiting some of the places that the Bible talks about, right? The early Christians, right? Uh, cities where Christians... Um, they built communities, right, to share the good news, right? Cities where Paul uh, traveled mm -hmm. and lived, right? And uh, we visit the seven churches or the seven cities of the seven churches of Revelation, right? And it was beautiful. We saw each church or each city as a spiritual phase, mm -hmm. right? So each one of us, we are in a spiritual phase, right? And Tyatira is the church that is that, right? A church that has compromised, right? And some people, they are living on this spiritual reality, right? They are dead. Mm -hmm. But Christ is hope. Christ can bring someone that is dead to life. And I think that your song talks about that, right? Yeah. I love this idea that we can be far from God, but God is never far from us. And this is a song, it's, it's hard to say, but uh, it's one of my favorite songs to sing. I love all the music, 
all the songs in the CD, but this has a special taste to me. And it's about don't resist the Lord and turning your heart to Him. And I hope you enjoy as you listen to this song right now. Each day begins anew. You too can start afresh. You can search for the Lord with all your heart. Within all your future hopes, leave behind all of your faults and move forward. I'm here with Douglas. He's the one who first dreamed about the project in Turkey, the one who first dreamed about the CD Come Back Home. How was that dream? How did it come about? <laughs> well, uh, we had a first season, and the first season was in Israel, right? Uh, 
and we always had this idea of the second season. Well, mm -hmm. I have the idea of the dream of five seasons, right? <laughs> oh my! <laughs> <laughs> but came to the second season, and for many reasons, I decide not to go through, right? But every time I decide, no, I'm not doing. I saw God doing something amazing, right? Opening doors, uh, bringing resources, people, and. If we have this project, it's because of God, mm -hmm. right? Definitely. And you know, uh, I value music, right? I do believe the word, the preaching, and the music uh, need to go along uh, together, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the, the, the teaching, the preaching needs um, music, and the music needs the, the word of God, right? And I, I recall, right, that, okay, we're going forth, uh, we and we are doing music, right? And I said to you, you are doing the music. <laughs> that was quite a surprise. For a little bit, I thought it was actually a joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure, it was out of your comfort zone, right? Yeah. You're singing uh, on my on my sermons as appeal songs, right? But now we are doing a project, a solo, right? Uh, 12 songs, 13 songs. 13 songs, um, uh, bilingual, because yeah, we did both right. English and Portuguese. Portuguese yeah. So we had the the going after versions, trying to make English versions, and then you have the studio time, both languages. Yeah. Definitely out of my comfort zone, but we see some fruit out of that project already, and it, it feels great. Yeah, we see God in control, mm -hmm. right? And we see His blessings already on this project. Mm-hmm. And... I'm saying that I will not do the other seasons, right? But you never know. It's in never God's say hand. never. <laughs> yeah, it's in God's hands. But it was beautiful to have you there, have our family there together, and visiting some of the places that the Bible talks about, right? The early Christians, right? Uh, cities where Christians... Um, they built communities, right, to share the good news, right? Cities where Paul uh, traveled mm -hmm. and lived, right? And uh, we visit the seven churches or the seven cities of the seven churches of Revelation, right? And it was beautiful. We saw each church or each city as a spiritual phase, mm -hmm. right? So each one of us, we are in a spiritual phase, right? And Tyatira is the church that is dead, right? A church that has compromised, right? And some people, they are living on this spiritual reality, right? They are dead. Mm -hmm. But Christ is hope. Christ can bring someone that is dead to life. And I think that your song talks about that, right? Yeah. I love this idea that we can be far from God, but God is never far from us. And this song, it's it's hard to say, but uh, it's one of my favorite songs to sing. I love all the music, all the songs in the CD, but this has a special taste to me. And it's about don't resist the Lord and turning your heart to Him. And I hope you enjoy as you listen to this song right now. Each day begins anew You too can start afresh You can search for the Lord With all your heart Within all your future hopes Leave behind all of your faults And move forward
I am beyond happy to be here with my dad. We're going to be talking about the video clip, The Promise. And because this was recorded in Portuguese, we have subtitles for you. Eu tenho um grande privilégio de ter meu pai para conversar aqui comigo. Muito feliz. O Senhor é uma pessoa que ama falar da volta de Jesus, ama pregar o Evangelho. Não tem um momento mais oportuno para a gente estar falando sobre isso. Perfeitamente. E eu também estou muito feliz de estar com você. Um projeto maravilhoso. Louva a Deus porque você é uma filha querida. O trabalho ficou muito bonito. Eu posso falar duas coisinhas sobre o álbum? Pode. Olha, em primeiro lugar, eu queria parabenizar porque vocês escolheram locais maravilhosos que tem tudo a ver é, com aquilo que a igreja é. Porque as igrejas que estavam na Ásia Menor hoje, é, na Turquia, elas representam períodos de tempo da igreja cristã, mas elas também podem representar períodos de tempo da nossa vida individual uhum. como cristãos. E esses locais são maravilhosos. Em segundo lugar, porque o álbum ficou muito bom. Normalmente, quando eu não sei se todos se parecem comigo, mas uma grande maioria eu acho que sim, quando nós pegamos um CD ou um DVD de música na mão, Normalmente nós gostamos de três músicas, quatro músicas, às vezes cinco ou seis no máximo. Mas esse trabalho ficou tão maravilhoso que todas as músicas são especiais. Elas podem ser ouvidas em qualquer dia, em qualquer lugar. Podem ser usadas na igreja. Louvado seja Deus. Parabéns. Ficou maravilhoso, viu? Foi um trabalho que foi esforço de muita gente, muita gente envolvida. É um sonho que nasceu no coração do Douglas e que floresceu com o esforço de, das pessoas envolvidas. Mas quando a gente faz um trabalho e a gente sabe que esse trabalho toca no coração dos nossos próximos, dos nossos familiares, saber que o senhor gosta de escutar o CD, nossa, é muito gratificante. 
Outra coisa que foi muito gratificante também é saber que a mãe gosta de CD, o vô gosta de CD, a nossa família tem escutado as músicas. Isso traz uma alegria pra gente que trabalhou. A gente gosta de alcançar o que tá longe e a gente gosta de alcançar o que tá perto. Uma coisa que eu gostei muito, que é essa música A Única Esperança, a gente gravou num lugar lindo chamado Capadócia. As pessoas vão ter a oportunidade de ver no clipe. A gente sabe que a Capadócia foi o lugar onde os cristãos se refugiaram da perseguição. Uhum. E a gente também acredita que eles estavam com essa ideia da esperança. É Toda essa labuta é o desejo de compartilhar a mensagem e também de estar com Jesus quando ele voltar. Quando nós pensamos em Jesus como nossa única esperança, não quer dizer que é a última esperança, mas é a única. É, nós estamos pensando num novo céu, numa nova terra, estamos pensando na volta de Jesus. Nós estamos pensando em coisas que às vezes fogem até ao conceito do dia a dia. Por exemplo, muitos de nós, como é o meu caso, já perdemos pessoas muito queridas. Eu já perdi meu pai, minha mãe, já perdi a mãe da Mari, que eu não gosto de chamar de sogra, porque ela foi uma mãe para mim. Eu já perdi uma cunhada branca. Nas igrejas que eu pastorei, quantas pessoas amadas nós já perdemos. E quando nós pensamos em Jesus, a volta de Jesus, essa esperança fantástica que não morre, que é eterna, e pensamos num novo céu e numa nova terra, nós pensamos em rever essas pessoas e não apenas revê-las, mas podermos viver com elas para sempre juntamente com Jesus. Então eu acho que a gente tem que ter isso em mente sempre, que a volta de Jesus é tudo para nós, e que um novo céu e uma nova terra nos aguardam. Eu tive a alegria de recentemente estar tá cantando no apelo do seu sermão. O senhor estava em Americana, na igreja da sua juventude, a igreja onde o senhor conheceu a mãe, vocês começaram a namorar ali. E para mim foi muito especial. Foi um daqueles momentos pérolas da vida. Que o senhor pregou da mensagem da esperança, da gente estar tá reunindo com quem a gente ama muito, que a gente já perdeu. E eu cantei essa música com alguma dificuldade. Me emocionei bastante cantando essa música. Mas ver a nossa família ali, reunida, foi aquele desejo profundo de estar juntos com eles nos céus. Onde a gente não vai ter que dar tchau. A gente não vai ter que enterrar ninguém. A gente não vai ter mais nenhum tipo de sofrimento. E foi muito especial. Obrigada por essa oportunidade, Papito. Eu gosto de pensar que aquele momento será muito único. Mas também será eterno. Porque, por exemplo, eu tenho amigos que estudaram comigo no, no grupo, na escola, no ginasial, na faculdade, que já foram embora. Uhum. Pessoas queridas também. Não são do sangue, mas são queridas. E poder encontrar estas pessoas outra vez, e conviver outra vez, e saber que você poderá ter a porta da sua casa sempre aberta, não ter que se preocupar com contas a pagar, não ter que se preocupar com saúde, com hospitais, com cemitérios. É, tudo isso faz uma diferença muito grande. Mas eu gosto de dizer sempre, filha, que nós estamos esperando Jesus. Não é porque nós esperamos um novo céu, uma nova terra, onde não tem morte, não tem tristeza, não tem lágrimas, não tem dor. Nós estamos esperando Jesus porque nós queremos estar com Jesus. Porque sem Jesus não tem significado. Né? Ele é a nossa esperança, única esperança. Thank you, Dad. And I hope that you have this hope, the hope of the promise that soon we're going to be together with Jesus forever. I know. 
Hi, I'm so excited to be here with Tiara and Brandon. We videotaped the song together, we recorded together the song Mission, and it was such a blessing to do the song with you guys. Thank you so much for joining in. And tell me a little bit about you guys, what you're doing, and the things you've been up to. <laughs> sure. Um, well, I just finished a couple months ago my first year at Berman, taking education. So I'm hoping to be an elementary school teacher here in a so couple cool. of years. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and then here actually in a few days, I'm taking off to camp again. I'm gonna work at Camp White Sand this year and that's kind of all I've been up to. <laughs> School keeps me busy. It's <laughs> great. You know, when we started uh, filming in Turkey, when we went on the trip, I was leaving my second year um, of theology at Berman University in Alberta. Um, and so far it's been a good experience. Turkey was um, a really big benefit for what I study. Um, it was nice to be able to um, be there in the, the areas where I'm studying at what I'm studying in school. And it was a completely different experience to have it all come to life and especially to sing a song about it too in two languages. That's so cool. Yeah, uh, Brandon and Tiara, they recorded the mission in English and they recorded the mission in Portuguese. And you guys were responsible for the lyrics in English too. You made the translation, right? Mm -hmm. How was it taping, recording a song that's like not even a language that you're used to, right? Yeah, um, translating it was really cool. I think it was definitely a challenge. I've never had to do that kind of a thing before, but um, I thought it was really cool because not only did we have to take the literal translation from Portuguese to English, but we also had to think of the meaning and make sure that it makes sense and like what our mission actually is and stuff. So that part was cool. Um, in terms of taping in Portuguese, <laughs> It was a little bit of a struggle, <laughs> definitely. Um, but I, I thought it was exciting because I've always wanted to learn a new language and stuff. So to be able to do one of my favorite things and sing and sing it in a different language was, uh, was really cool. Some of the pronunciations were a little bit tongue twisters, <laughs> but overall it was really exciting. I really enjoyed it. There's something about that song that even if we were singing in a different language, normally you'd think that you'd forget about what the song means because you're focused on what you're trying to say and we don't understand Portuguese so we're focusing on what we're trying to say pronouncing it right but for some reason for me the meaning regardless of what language you're we saying it's still cut through I don't know if it's because of where we were filming um, it just helped the atmosphere helped always remind me what we were singing about or maybe it was some words just transcend all tongues all languages all dialects and it, it, you realize what you're saying and it, it never loses its meaning. So That's so powerful. And we recorded specifically the mission at Paul's Well. Mm -hmm. And such a powerful location. You know Paul's story in the Bible, his letters, everything so impactful about him. And I think what you said, it's so beautiful because we learned so much during the trip about the Bible. We learned so much as we were singing songs that are filled with scripture or things related to God and knowing that we sang a song about mission and seeing you working in a mission, you know, working with your gifts to God, that makes my heart so happy. And I hope that as you watch the clip, the mission, I hope that you're touched by it and I hope that you understand that God has a mission for all of us and He has a mission for you too. i 
This next song is one of my favorite hymns. It's a very special song, and I got to record it with a very special person, my sister Thank Anna. Thank you. Thank you. It was such a nice, it was a privilege actually, because this song is a hymn and one of my favorites because it really talks about how God cares for us, right? And we really, we could feel that during our trip to Turkey mm -hmm. to do all these video clips and all the recordings that we did. It was like a month away from home. My husband recovering from a knee surgery. It's not an easy recovery. And with crutches. And I had just found out that I was pregnant. Six weeks, it was like, oh, very sick. And we had three kids along with us, right? So young kids. 
and in every step of the way nobody got sick not even a cold we and had amazing food available for them the food they were able to sleep we had well. a bed to sleep and in every place there were things for them to do for the kids to enjoy even when we were there in the hot summer it was super hot and the kids were fine we had water and I could feel like how God is amazing and he sends his angels and I feel blessed. Lee, I agree with you, like looking back at our Turkey trip, it was more than a year ago, right? We felt his care and we do nowadays as well. Just the mm -hmm. fact that we lived close to each other and this ability of being able to be in the same church finally, right? Like the after The same church, decades. the same neighborhood. Our kids can grow up together. That's for me, it's, it's God care. God's caring for us and it's, it's a blessing and I can't thank him enough for all the things that he does for us, right? So singing this song is just being a living testimony of mm -hmm. how God is good and how he keeps his promises. The song has a powerful message, a message of God caring for us. We matter to God. And I truly hope that as you watch this video clip, you feel God talking to you. I will take care of you. I'm with you. You are important to me. Be not dismayed, whatever be tied. God will take care of you. Hi, I'm so excited to have here with me Ricardo. Ricardo Martins, he is the producer of the CD. We use a lot of his songs for the CD and we translated them to English. So we need, made like an English interpretation of the songs. And Ricardo, tell me a little bit about your work in music, especially in Brazil. Mm -hmm. First of all, it's a pleasure to be here. And so I'm, I'm trying to give you a summary of my work there. I started work for the church in 2001 in a school in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. 
So I worked there, worked there for three years. And then I, in 2004, I went to It's Written, Brazil, to work there. And I worked there until 2015. Okay. In 2007, yes, 2007, I started working for the Voice of Prophecy mm -hmm. and the King's Herods in Brazil. So that was my summary of my work in Brazil. I started in 2001 until 2015 working for the church. It's incredible how you impacted the music in Brazil um, with, for the King's Herald, Heralds and the worship song in Brazil is different after you. And I really thank God for your talents and thank you so much for lending your talents for the CD, this project. We used a lot of your songs, like I said before, we sang a lot of them and um, they touched my heart in a very special way. Uh, we recorded together, you were the one helping me record, telling me things to do and it was a great experience, I learned so much from you. Let's talk a little bit about, about the song that we're going to see shortly, Grace is Still Available. That's a very impactful, important song. Tell us a little bit about the process of composing that song. Mm -hmm. um, so this song uh, we recorded in Brazil for the King's Herod. Uh, actually, it was one of my last CDs there. Uh, and something interesting about this composition was uh, this song wasn't. Uh, I I didn't compose this song for this for that specific CD. And one day I was uh, in a city in Brazil. The name is Salvador, and. I, I was having lunch with a friend, he's a, a pastor in Brazil, his name is Luis, and um, I think you know him? Yes, <laughs> and, he's a great preacher. Yes, and he asked me if in that CD I, I had uh, composed or someone composed a song about grace, and I said, oh no, actually no, and he said, I'm going to preach about this tonight, so Maybe you can uh, get inspired, I don't know, about uh, this uh, specific um, idea about grace. And actually it was a very good uh, sermon and I, I paid attention and I took some notes. And then I composed that song. And I, sorry, I, I'm, I, and then I, I, I'm, I was very uh, happy because you asked if to record that song. And at the same time, it was a little bit hard because, as you know, to make a different uh, arrangement and a different idea at that time it was for, I composed and I made the arrangement for the quartet, uh, the quartet, mm -hmm. sorry. And now to you ask me to record, so it was very, very nice. Yeah, going from a quartet to a female singer, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> But I think I love the result. I love how you made it different. I love that we have vocals in the background, people singing too. So it, it's, it really touches my heart, that song. And we, we recorded the video clip um, in Ephesus. Mm -hmm. Ephesus in Turkey is a beautiful city. And this song had such a beautiful background because we recorded in the Library of Celsius. And I hope you, you really enjoyed this video clip. It's a beautiful location, but most importantly, it's a beautiful song about God's amazing grace. How much He loves us, how much He's there for us. I really, truly hope that this song inspires you as it inspires my life.
I'm so happy to be here with my sister and my brother-in-law. We're able to finally sing a trio together. Oh, yes. It was and a not blessing. only singing, but recording it and doing a video clip in Turkey. So it's very, very exciting to be here with you guys. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Uh, we had the privilege of going to Turkey with our children, right? At the time, 
uh, Sophia was in your tummy, oh, right? You were pregnant with her. I was very sick. And it was the early stages, right? Yeah, it was not morning sickness, all day sickness. <laughs> but it was, it was a blessing. Now I'm yeah. happy here. And a couple of weeks before that, I had a knee surgery, so I was still with crutches when we arrived there. For a week, I was still with crutches, and after that, I could get rid of the crutches and start trying to walk again. Oh, it was a very That's right. good recovery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. And people uh -huh. thought we were kind of crazy, right? Traveling for a month with a person in a recovery and with small children and a pregnant lady in early stage. So, but I think, man, I would do it again. It was a beautiful opportunity that we had. I feel like we had many unexpected blessings. For Like, for instance, I felt many people the adults there were so welcoming to the children oh yes like in the city of alasan year right alasa here of uh, the city we recorded philadelphia church mm -hmm. i remember an older adult a gentleman who played with all of her children oh, yes. kept them entertained they were so caring and loving and the kids loved and god was so good that in every place that we went there was like an animal for them to yes. play yeah. one of the stops there we saw a camel and daddy and eduardo we went on top of the camel and to this day, every time he's gonna go on my shoulder, he calls Dead Camel. Oh, Daddy Camel! So it's cute. a nice ride. Yeah, they oh, were good. What about the lion? The lion. Oh, well, we I love don't lions. See, yes, we, we didn't lions. see them in Turkey, but we love lions, right? <laughs> yes, it was. It was nice. God was amazing. Yeah, we saw monkeys. God yes. was very kind to us on, during that trip, and I love that we recorded yeah, Susanna Yearly's song yeah. "Surrender," right? It's such a beautiful song that talks about us surrendering ourselves to God in a special way. And the ultimate goal is to be with Jesus. If we Amen. surrender Him with, to Him today, we can live with Him eternally. And, Amen. and I hope that this song touches you as it touched, touched us as we were singing it.
I'm here with my friend Tiara, such a talented girl with a beautiful voice. Thank you so much for being part of this project. And I know you've been singing since you were young. Tell me a little bit about that, you singing. Music has always been a huge part of my life and I've always had a passion for it. Uh, ever since I was little, my parents started me off young with piano lessons and voice lessons. So I kind of did that until uh, mid-teenage age and then um, when I started getting into high school and university, I really started to transition into more of less performance, more worship. So leading worship, I have amazing opportunities to lead worship, not only when I'm away at school, but also here in Saskatoon. So that's been such a blessing. And then continuing to um, be in choirs and, and just to continue to just sing wherever I am. I always use it as my go-to, my comfort, if I'm stressed or upset. So it's always been a part of my life and, and I love it. It's, it's awesome. We had the incredible opportunity to record the video clip at the Hierapolis, like the big theater in Turkey. How did it feel? Because for me, it was so like... It was, it was breathtaking. I mean, I think uh, of all the places that we visited in, in Turkey and Greece, I think that was one of my favorite. It was just amazing to see how well preserved it was and to, to just see like the awe and the wonder and just dream about all the amazing things that could have happened at that place and just all of the, the seats, the stonework, and you can just see in the structure like how much effort was put into it. And it was just, it was amazing, it was beautiful. It's an incredible historical site in Turkey. And I think the possibility of singing that song, such a beautiful hymn, mm. softly and tenderly, the, the lyrics are so profound. Mm. What does that song mean to you, Tiara? Um, it's one of the first hymns I can remember singing and I know it was uh, one of my Nana's favorites and I loved singing it with her because she would always get that harmony like right on point. Um, I, I just love how it's such, it's so raw and it's so simple and it's so real. Just the, the whole chorus is just come home. And that's what, that's what Jesus is calling, that's what God is calling us is to just come home, come spend time with Him, let Him into, allow Him into our lives and just so that He can welcome us home into heaven one day. And I think that's, that's so powerful, just those, those simple two words. It was just, it was amazing to sing it both in English and in Portuguese, so powerful. It is a direct appeal to our hearts mm. to be close to Jesus. And I hope that when you watch this video clip, you feel that closeness to Jesus as He calls you to come home to be with Him.
I'm so happy because today I have with me my dad and my grandpa. And they are originally from Brazil, so we're going to provide you with subtitles. Ele tem quatro netos. Eu sou, então, meu irmão, minha irmã, eu, o Luan. Tem seis bisnetos que o amam muito. Nós temos a Oli, né, vô? O Dudu, o neto, o Cris, a Laura e a Sofia. E o meu vô tem sido um pilar espiritual da nossa família. Ele é sempre uma referência de oração, uma pessoa dedicada a Deus. E a gente vai estar falando da música Aceite o Chamar. E a gente entende que a forma que ele aceitou o chamado de Deus para a vida dele é muito especial. Vô, como que o senhor conheceu Jesus? Eu tenho um vizinho que recebeu estudo de bíblico nas conferências de americana, igreja americana. E o pastor Sérgio Otaviano deu estudo para eles. E nós mudamos de casa. E essa vizinha sempre ia em casa, falava, vamos na igreja, vamos na igreja. E aí o pai do avô do Silima começou a dar estudo para a avó, estudo bíblico. E eu fiquei com infecção no pulmão. Numa semana eu li o conflito do século inteiro, os quatro volumes. Nossa, avô! Uma semana? Uma semana. Depois eu comecei a entrar no estudo bíblico, 16 anos seguidos eu fiz o ano bíblico. Essa foi minha conversão na, na igreja e levei a família toda. Levou a família toda. E nesse intervalo eu perdi um filho, né? Acidente na igreja, frente à igreja. Atropelado por um carro. Ele tinha 12 anos de idade. Mas não me abalou sair da igreja por causa disso aí. Não, né, vó? Não. Mas não me abalou porque ele estava firme em Deus. Mas a avó ficou meio abalada, né? Mas eu me apeguei no estudo bíblico, na lá. O que eu posso falar do vô, Rebeca, é o seguinte. Ele tem a cabeça muito boa, mesmo com 87 anos. Para você ter uma ideia, às vezes eu lembro de algum trecho de, do Espírito de Profecia, de Ellen White, e eu pergunto para ele se ele lembra em qual livro está. E ele diz, deve estar em tal livro, porque ele tem a cabeça muito boa. E outra coisa, ele mora conosco desde que o Neumuelzinho nasceu. Isto quer dizer 38 anos. E as pessoas pensam que ele é meu pai, uhum. quando na verdade ele é pai da Mari. Então quando ele está acostumado a ir a algum lugar comigo e de repente eu vou sozinho nesse tal lugar, as pessoas perguntam assim, e o seu pai, por que, é que não veio? Eu nem perco tempo explicando que é meu sogro, porque é como se fosse meu pai também, né? E ele não pôde vir hoje, está com reumatismo ou coisa dessa natureza, né? Mas é um prazer grande tê-lo perto, viu? Agora eu gostaria de falar uma coisa assim que quando eu termino o culto, todo mundo vai em cima dele, vai perguntar isso, perguntar aquilo. E eu disfarçadamente, eu chego lá e falo, pastor, o senhor quer mostrar lá em casa hoje? <risos> e aí, aí acabou. Aí eu aceito o almoço e fica fácil, né? Esse é o Vonil, né? Eu não sabia. E a... Uh... A gente teve a alegria de gravar essa música, Aceite o Chamar. É uma música do CD. E a gente gravou no Centro Histórico de Pérgamo. É um centro histórico muito especial, porque lá onde estava o altar de Zeus, e se encontra agora, em Berlim, no museu, uhum. e é uma carta muito especial onde fala que as pessoas precisam voltar-se para Deus. Eu também estive nesse lugar. E claro que não foi na mesma ocasião, porque eu estive lá alguns anos antes. Mas uma coisa me chamou a atenção, e até eu falei para as pessoas que estavam na minha equipe, né? Se esse Deus, ele não foi capaz de sustentar o seu próprio altar, porque retiraram o altar dele e levaram para a Alemanha, eu disse, que tipo de Deus é esse, né? O Deus verdadeiro é aquele que sustenta o seu altar. Então nós temos que olhar para o nosso Deus, o Deus criador, o Deus mantenedor, o Deus salvador. Há muitos deuses hoje e as pessoas criam deuses, mas o Deus verdadeiro, ele é eterno, não é criado. 
não é criação humana, não é da imaginação do homem, é o Deus que existe desde a eternidade, é o Deus que nos fez, que criou o universo todo, e é o Deus que nos resgata da maldição do pecado. E que um dia desses ele vai nos reunir. E quando ele nos chama para servi-lo, ele quer que nós sejamos instrumentos, testemunhas, para mostrar as virtudes de Deus para as pessoas, para que as pessoas também vol se voltem para Ele. E eu acho que essa é a beleza da música. Deus está chamando para a gente ser instrumento, para ser testemunha, para que as pessoas se voltem para Deus, porque um dia desses Ele vem para buscar todos aqueles que o adoram. Amém. I hope this song touches your heart and you accept his call to your life. Still to hear his 
under your I've been having the privilege to show you people who are involved in this Turkey project, in the CD, in the making of the DVD. And today we have Everton. Everton is a major producer in this project. He was behind the cameras. He's the one editing content. And I'm very glad to be able to share with you a little bit of what he experienced taping this song and taping as well the whole project. The conversation was recorded in Portuguese, but we're going to provide you some subtitles so you can understand what we talked about. Volta para casa foi uma música feita diferente, né? Como que a gente decidiu fazer essa música? É um projeto bem interessante. A gente decidiu gravar em todas as cidades que a gente passou. 10 cidades, pelo menos. E era uma logística bem complicada, porque você tá com uma equipe pequena, num projeto muito grande, e tem, por exemplo, trocas de roupa. Porque cada lugar que a gente gravava um clipe, a gente gravava Volta para casa também. Todas as músicas que a gente gravou, a gente gravou um trecho de volta para casa também, em inglês e em português. Então foi uma, uma experiência bem, bem interessante. E era um momento assim bem um pouco mais tranquilo, né? Porque era o dia inteiro filmando, das 8 da manhã até umas 6 da tarde, pelo menos. E o tempo inteiro pensando no enquadramento, o tempo inteiro pensando no roteiro. Daí quando chegava para gravar a música, era um momento mais tranquilo porque a gente escolhia os ângulos, escolhia o enquadramento que ia fazer e gravava. Então dava para pensar um pouco no que estava fazendo, menos tecnicamente, mais espiritualmente. Uma cena que eu me recordo bastante foi em Éfeso, já acho que para o final da viagem, né? Que a gente estava gravando e a gente estava preocupado, porque queria, eu queria um, um, um enquadramento da fachada inteira. Só que é um prédio de três andares, quatro andares, é um negócio muito majestoso, bonito. E é o ponte, né? Acho que deve ter uns 5 km quadrados o sítio arqueológico, mas todo mundo para lá para tirar foto. Eu, Douglas, né, conversando, a gente sempre tinha esse pensamento. A gente não tem exclusividade de lugar, a gente tem autorização, mas não tem exclusividade. Uhum. Então vai ter turista. E a gente vai lidar com isso e vai viver bem com isso. É difícil, né? Você... <risos> Eles vão fazer parte e acabou, né? É. E daí a gente posicionou as câmeras, eu e o Juninho gravando, o Douglas segurando as crianças, né? Quando começou a gravar, parece que uma leva de turistas saiu, e a que estava chegando parou para assistir. Então a gente tinha eu um espaço disso. de... Eu lembro tinha tipo... É, uma plateia, <risos> uma assim, com, com 100 metros quadrados de palco, assim, sei lá, só pra gente. E eu ficava pensando assim, daqui a pouco vai entrar alguém. Porque sempre acontece isso, você tá gravando, alguém entra na frente. Eu tenho que ter outro enquadramento para cobrir essa parte. E não apareceu ninguém. Foi, foi uma coisa bem interessante. Eu lembro de ter orado sobre isso, né, todas as vezes. Foi uma jornada muito intensa, é muito cansativo, principalmente quando se dispõe a fazer esse tipo de projeto com um orçamento mais reduzido. É, quando você embarca nisso, você já sabe dos desafios, né? Foi minha segunda experiência nesse tipo de projeto, a primeira foi em Israel. Então eu já, eu já tinha em mente que essas coisas podiam acontecer. E daí eu fico imaginando como que Deus cuida da gente nessas, nessas coisas. É, eu não sei onde esse projeto vai chegar, Todo mundo, acho que todo produtor do mundo tem a ideia de que, que o projeto alcance milhões de pessoas. É, eu não sei. Tem aquele pensamento de que um dia a gente vai para o céu e alguém vai encostar no seu ombro e vai falar assim, você lembra daquilo que você fez um dia e tal? Eu estou aqui porque você fez isso. Então, eu acho que esse é, um, é o meu sonho em relação a esse projeto. É um dia chegar no céu e talvez encontrar você lá. E o que eu acho interessante é que a música é Come Back Home. And I hope that this song reaches your heart. I know that some people may be watching were people who were close to God at some point and now you feel like you're far from Him. I hope this song will reach your heart and help you to come back to God, come back home. No way to avoid it The 
I have the blessing of being here with my mom and my dad. They don't speak fluent English, so we're going to be putting subtitles for you to understand what they're talking about. But I hope they're going to be touched by what they're going to share right now. Eh, eu não estaria aqui se não fosse por vocês, obviamente. 
E esse projeto foi um projeto muito especial. E mãe, me fala um pouquinho o que você achou de tudo isso. Olha, foi uma emoção muito grande porque se cumpriu o que Deus prometeu para mim. Quando eu pedi para Ele. Porque quando você era pequenininha, acho que muita gente já sabe, mas eu vou voltar a contar essa história. Você ficou muito doente. Você ficou à beira de ter, de ter leucemia. E eu orava para Deus, para Deus te curar, porque eu achava que era obrigação de Deus te curar. Mas um dia a ficha caiu. Eu pensei, não. Não é obrigação de Deus curar ninguém. Mas é obrigação minha entregar minha filha nas mãos de Deus, para que Deus possa fazer dela o que quiser. Aí quando eu falei para Deus, olha Deus, ela é sua. Você estava quase morrendo. Eu falei, olha, o Senhor pode me entregar na manhã da ressurreição, mas... Se o Senhor for da Tua vontade, eu entrego ela para Ti, para que o Senhor possa fazer dela um, um instrumento na pregação do Evangelho. E hoje eu estou vendo esse fruto. Estou muito feliz e agradecida a Deus. Obrigada, mãe. A gente escolheu falar de uma música que é muito especial. Vale a pena esperar. O que, que essa música fala para vocês? Bom, o que eu posso dizer é o seguinte, em primeiro lugar, acho que vocês escolheram um lugar magnífico para gravar o clipe, a ilha de Pátimos, foi exatamente onde João ouviu o Senhor Jesus dizendo, virei outra vez. Isso inspirou tanto o João, que ele chegou a dizer, vem Senhor Jesus. Ele queria que Jesus voltasse naquela hora, mas ele não voltou naquela hora. Mas vale a pena esperar, porque um dia desses ele virá. Thank you so much, Dad, for inspiring your lives, putting Jesus in the center. Thank you so much, Mom, because you surrendered me to him since early on. Having this hope that Jesus will come soon is the most important hope we have. And I hope that as you listen to the song, as you watch this powerful video clip, you will hope that he'll come soon and that we're going to have a per perfect life with him.
I am beyond thrilled because I have here with me one of the most special people <laughs> of my life, Olivia, my firstborn. And I may have mentioned it before, but the greatest privilege of this trip was we were able to bring our families with us, right? We, we arranged in a way that we brought kids. And Olivia came along with Christopher too. And Olivia was part of everything that we did somehow. And did you have fun in Turkey, Olivia? Oh, I did. It was, was it a fun trip? Oh, it was. Yeah? What do you remember about Turkey the best? Um, my dad followed uh, uh, somewhere where I called Olivia, like my name. The hotel? There was a hotel with your name in it? Yeah, and do you remember that we were in Ephesus, um, a very important city, and it's one of the cities that you're going to see. And the place. turtle bit me. Yes, the turtle bit you in one of the cities. And do you remember the story about a cat? What happened with the cat? Um, the cat got Christmas, the cheek. Yeah, so we had animal stories in this trip, right? And I said bad cat. Yeah, you, were, you weren't very happy with the cat. And that was in the museum in Ephesus. But Christopher was fine, right? The people from the museum were quite friendly and they came and they took care of him. And uh, we were in Turkey and then mommy was taping some segments and then some video clips, right? Do you remember if you had people taking care of you? Yes. Who was taking care of you while mommy was taping? My auntie. Your auntie and Tiana. Did daddy take care of you? Yeah. They, you might saw her before in the video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Tiara, right? And Auntie Holly. And we had lots of help with the kids. Mm -hmm. Because while I was taping a segment or the video clips, um, Olivia and Christopher and Douglas <laughs> were around. We had different settings. It was very interesting to have that kind of a feeling that I didn't have to say goodbye. I didn't have to leave them home. We brought them with us, right? Yes. Thank you, Olivia. And I hope you enjoyed this video clip that was taped in Ephesus with the song once again. Once again I find myself Trying to confess my sins You know who I truly am And see what others don't You know all that's in my heart My struggles and my past failures I wish to do what's right and good But I'm changed Again, I'm here, my Lord, I surrender to you, take me as I am, break me, make me anew, I want to be with Christ so he may live in me no matter what I try to do thoughts and feelings fall 
fall short when compared to you. I don't have what it takes, but only through you cries my love. Through your loving self. Crucified with Christ, so He may live in me. We're here with Douglas, my husband, and we know that Antioch was a very special, unique place for you. Tell us a little bit about the experience you had as you were in Antioch. Well, we're planning the trip, right? And we realized that uh, Antioch was not so far from Tarsus, one of the places that we are taping a show about Paul's life. Mm -hmm. And we decided to go there. And it was so meaningful because we are what we are today. The Christianity is what it is today because of the Antioch community, right? Uh, Antioch was a driven place. Antioch was a place where the Holy Spirit was at work. Mm -hmm. And the Jerusalem church heard that something was going on in Antioch. So they sent Barnabas to check it out and see what's going on. And if there's a problem, please resolve that problem. And when he got there, the Holy Spirit impressed his heart saying, what's going on here? It is a good thing. Mm -hmm. It was very interesting because the followers of Christ were first called Christians in Antioch. That community was a community of love. A community that they have surrendered their lives to God. And the beauty was that when Barnabas got there, he realized that that community would be a blessing to a special person, Paul. Well, Paul was not able to find himself a place on the Jerusalem church. They had their questions about, is him... Uh, a real follower of Christ. But at the same time, uh, some Jews were trying to kill Paul. So Paul goes back to Tarsus, his birthplace, right? He was kind of in exile there. So Barnabas, he realized this community is a great community for Paul. So he travels a few weeks to Tarsus, right? We're talking about 300 kilometers, wow. right? And he bring Tars uh, Paul to Antioch. And there, 
many beautiful things happen. There's a discipleship, a teaching. The Holy Spirit was in action, giving visions, and people were converted, right? And the Antioch Church sponsored the missionary trips of Paul, the first, the second, the third. The Antioch Church um, support the Jerusalem Church when they face a famine. Antioch was a driven church. And Antioch uh, was a community that they tried to preserve the everlasting gospel. And it is that Jesus Christ is the only uh, way for salvation. Mm -hmm. Some Jews were preaching that you need to believe in Christ plus something, right? And Antioch was not happy with that preaching. So they send a few delegates to Jerusalem and they have the first council of the church. And they decide that the real gospel is Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ. So being there, I had this moment that if I'm a pastor, it's because of Antioch Church. And I want to see more Antioch Church. My ministry somehow has been uh, driven to see more Antioch Church. Mm -hmm. ch church that are uh, willing to do anything for the proclamation of the gospel. Church that are willing to innovate uh, for the gospel's sake. Church that are not afraid to stand against uh, error to defend the everlasting gospel. So for me, being there was amazing. And I remember I was supposed to tape my part, right? And I got emotional, right? <laughs> had tears in my eyes. I had to recompose myself. Uh, but for sure, Antioch was a highlight on this journey. And the song that you sang there, oh my goodness, is one of my favorite favorites. It's a very powerful song. First of all, it makes me deeply happy to know that this trip impacted you spiritually as well, right? Because you're doing the work and then to know that it changed you as well. It's, it's very meaningful. And singing Revive there was one of a kind experience. It's definitely a different place. It's definitely a place where the Holy Spirit is because of its history. And having that review with you here telling me all these things again that I I heard before it makes me think about how all of us have a portion something that we can contribute to the God, to God's kingdom and I hope that as you listen to the song revive you feel touched to do your part to to God's kingdom to be part of uh, Antioch somehow and I hope you enjoy it bridegroom has come God's people arise and look for the oil of the Holy Spirit wheat and tares are wrapped together but God shall rend them asunder for his invisible church must wake now Revive invisible church Broken believers that evil drove out Come with your weeping and tears Oh, come singing the day has arrived Arise from all nations Revive my people like Israel It's time
people, Abraham's seed, are spread across the world. Israel's remnant, children of Christ, have become an invisible church. The blind who see, the wheat in the tares, the sheep without their shepherd, these broken heroes were not. I am beyond happy because I'm here with the better part of me. These three guys are the people that I love the most, my beautiful family. Yeah, and we had the privilege to travel together in this project, right? I think for the first time we always had projects, sometimes you by yourself or I was by myself, but with the family it was the first time and we had a lot of fun, right? right it was a family endeavor, right? Yeah. We travel together, we stay in the hotels, bus together, it was beautiful, right? And it was tough because you can see uh, Christopher will not stop, right, the time. Olivia always behave herself very well, right, Olivia? <laughs> Did you have fun in Turkey? Was it a good trip for you? Yeah, and I remember uh, Christopher, uh, he was kind of going crazy in the bus, right? And there was just one thing that was able to uh, give him peace somehow. And do you remember what was that? Yeah, you would put earphones in his ears um, and that would be the album, the CG, Come Back Home. He would listen to it still and he would sing along. Yeah, he was a year and a half at the time and it was a beautiful experience, right? And I remember that we stay in Sardis, right? Na Lydia Hotel. Uh, it was a nice hotel with a playground for the kids. Do you remember the playground? Where was it? The one was when we eat? Yeah. The one with the tower? Yeah. Yeah, I remember how to go there again. <laughs> sure, yeah, we can play. And we have a swim pool, right? But I think the beauty was not the hotel, but the city, right? Sardis was an old city. Uh, Sardis was there 600 years before Christ. But it was a city during um, the New, Test New Testament area uh, about reputation, right? Live on the past reputation. Uh, was not real anymore. And I think somehow, I think it's a call for us to be real. Real as 
are individuals real as a family, right? And I think your song talks a lot about that. Yeah, it's a song about someone asking forgiveness to God and being vulnerable and real before God. And it's a song that has the power to touch the heart and say, be honest with God, be yourself before God. I face the great storm all along No place for me to hide My tears are dried by the breeze There's no strength left in me No one Forgive me, O oh Lord, for turning from you and the plans you made for me. Forgive me, O oh Lord, for hiding myself and running away from you. I plead. Thank you so much for being part of this journey with me. I truly hope that if we don't meet here on this earth, then we meet in heaven soon. And I hope that you take away the message that God cares for you. Thank you so much. God bless you.